Okay, so this is going to be the first in a series of many videos uh, about Lewis dot structures. So um, basically what a Lewis dot structure is, is at, at its very basic, it's a visual representation of an atom, an ion, or a molecule. Um, all valence electrons are shown, and they're shown as dots. And more often than not, you'll, you'll see that it's pairs of electrons that are shared by two atoms, or more commonly known as bonds, are actually shown as lines instead of uh, instead of dots. It makes it a little bit easier. So here we have the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, CO2. Um, in the structure on the left here, the shared pairs of electrons are actually shown as pairs of dots, whereas this one on the right here, the uh, shared pairs of electrons are shown as lines. Um, like I said, more often than not, you'll see this one on the right. It's uh, to me, it's easier to read. There's not all these dots all over the place. So, uh, yeah, okay. Well, what are some of the reasons why uh, these atoms and elements and things like that bond together the way they do? Um, well, to find the answer to this question, you're going to have to think back to uh, covalent bonding. And uh, what is covalent bonding? Well, uh, at this point in your level of education, you probably know that covalent bonding is uh, when two atoms share valence electrons with one another. And uh, the reason why is because each atom is trying to achieve what's called the noble gas electron configuration. It's trying to gain as many electrons or lose as many electrons as it can to achieve the configuration of the nearest noble gas. And if you recall, all noble gases have a full outermost electron shell, so that's actually the most stable configuration. So, and it's basically this behavior that allows us to sort of group things together, and we can say that the number of bonds an atom forms uh, depends on its number of valence electrons. So, and just a tip, <clears throat> for the representative elements, the number of valence electrons is going to be equal to whatever group number that that, el that uh, element falls in. Um, when I say representative elements, I'm not talking about the uh, transition metals or the inner transition metals. I'm talking about groups 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and you know, and the noble gases too. So I'm not talking about any of those, you know, that big hunk of metal in between. Okay, so if we start examining a couple of Lewis structures for a couple of different elements, notice that the Lewis structure for hydrogen, hydrogen has one valence electron and it forms one bond, but then you get to helium. Helium actually has two valence electrons, but it doesn't form any bonds. Um, the reason why is because helium is actually a noble gas. Its outermost electron shell is full. And that's another point that I wanted to bring up. This tip that I just showed you about number of valence electrons being equal, equal to group number, uh, that doesn't really apply to helium. Helium is actually the one exception to that rule, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so you got boron, three valence electrons, it forms three bonds. Carbon, four valence electrons, it forms four bonds. Okay. Nitrogen has five valence electrons and it forms, wait a minute, it only forms three bonds, but it has five valence electrons. You know, what's going on here? Well, you can see that this pattern sort of increases once you get to nitrogen. Oxygen has six valence electrons, but it only forms two bonds. Chlorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons, and it only forms one bond. And then you got neon over here with eight valence electrons and it doesn't form any bonds at all. So, you know, it's not a direct relationship. Uh, you know, nitrogen, it has five valence electrons, but it doesn't form five bonds, so the, the, it's not exactly a direct <coughs> relationship between number of valence electrons and the number of bonds. And the reason why, if we examine the Lewis structure for nitrogen a little more closely, we know that nitrogen has five valence electrons. And when we're drawing these dots in, we want to kind of imagine four sort of quadrants, if you will, one on top, one on bottom, one to the left, and one to the right. Four quadrants, and each one of those quadrants can hold a maximum of two electrons, two valence electrons. So we said that nitrogen has five valence electrons, so let's start placing them. Let's say we put one up here, let's put one over here, one over here, one over here. And now notice that you know, the fifth electron is going to have to go on top, or it's going to have to, you know, sort of buddy up. It's going to have to join in a side with 
one of these electrons here. So I'm just going to put it up here. The placement doesn't really matter. It's still equivalent. So the basic idea here is that the unpaired valence electrons will form bonds, but the, or excuse me, yes, the unpair, unpaired valence electrons will form bonds. The paired valence electrons will not form bonds. So in here we have this pair here, and we actually call that a lone pair of electrons. So we have three unpaired electrons and one lone pair, a total of one lone pair, a total of five valence electrons. So if the paired electrons will not form bonds and the unpaired electrons will form bonds, then we can conclude that based on this structure here, nitrogen will form three bonds. So I'll just run through a quick introductory example here. Let's say we want to propose a Lewis structure for, an, for a compound that is composed only of hydrogen and nitrogen. Well, it would help first to draw the Lewis structures of both of these things and then see sort of, you know, how you could, you know, put them together to achieve uh, noble gas configurations all around. So if we draw the Lewis structure for H, hydrogen has one valence electron and nitrogen has five valence electrons and we just drew the structure for it up here. So I'm just going to draw it again. Nitrogen forms three bonds, right? One valence electron, one, one bond, and then five valence electrons with three bonds. So, and we just sort of established why it does that uh, a moment ago. So it seems to me like the, the best way to put these two together would be to have a nitrogen, and I'm going to go ahead and surround it with its valence electrons, and then hydrogen here, hydrogen here, and hydrogen here. And each of those hydrogens has one valence electron. So that is the Lewis structure for NH3. Um, and if we clean this up a little bit, we can draw it more equivalently or more clearly, excuse me, as this. So like I said, that looks a little nicer than that. That's got a bunch of dots everywhere. But uh, basically, that's just sort of a, an example on uh, Lewis structures. I mean, it, it gets a little trickier when we uh, when there's different, you know, like you know, three or more different kinds of atoms, and you know, we want to know which to bond, you know, what elements bond to what, and things like that. And there is a general algorithm, a general method for how you do that. And I will go into that on another video. So, all right, hope this helped.